Welcome back. Finally managed to get hold of the Lumintop GT Mini for a test and review and this was sent in via Gearbest. Packaging on this is very simple but I'll come on to the specs later in the video. So we'll start off with the light just on its own and I've put the dimensions on the screen for you so it's quite a small light, pretty compact for such a long range torch. There's your single side switch on the side, quite a bit of knurling on the body and there's also a fair amount of heat sinking around the head. Obviously it's an enlarged head because this is a long range torch but it does feel pretty good in the hand. Whilst it's not pocketable it's definitely easy enough to carry around in a jacket and I'll show you a holster later on that will fit this. You don't get one included. There's the side switch. There is a light that's under there that will glow when you've got the batteries in. There's a crenulated bezel and you've also got some grooves on the side of the head which will prevent it rolling around too much. Onto the LED and this is an XPL in either a cool or a neutral white. The version I've got is the neutral white. Also got that anti-reflective coating on the glass. Just unscrew the base or tail cap now and that's also got some flat edges on it. And this was semi-greased up but I did put a bit more grease on it. There's your gold plated spring contacts on the bottom. And you can also remove the tube from the head. Again, not too much grease on this. I just put some extra grease on myself. So there's your O-rings for the ceiling, top and bottom. And inside the head, you'll see there's a spring contact there. And that means that we can use the flat top cells with this as well. Included in this pack is the 18350 tube. And I did have a couple of these batteries around. They're only some cheap budget ones that I had, but they're unprotected and they do work. So your overall size is going to be a lot less with that, but bear in mind your run time is also going to be quite a bit shorter. It's nice to have as an optional extra that they've included, maybe as a backup or perhaps if you just wanted to keep a few spare batteries around. It's still fairly comfortable, but because it's so short, it would be fairly easy to drop. So I'd recommend putting the wrist strap on this. Go back to the normal tube where we can use the 18650s. Um, this cell is an unprotected cell. I've tried both types, doesn't really make any difference whether it's protected or unprotected. Plenty of knurling there, although I did notice it didn't really line up with the switch. With the lettering, that might bother some people. Basic wrist strap that's included. You also get a couple of spare eye rings and a metal ring there. This is a user guide. I'm gonna to have to go over this in a lot more detail a bit later in the video because it's a bit more complicated than your average torch and your warranty card. Whenever you put a battery in this, you'll see that it does light up the green side switch. It is possible to turn that off if that bothers you. I'm going to show you the ramping user interface first because that's the default one. And then I'll cover the manual later on. But a single press on and a single press to turn off. It takes a couple of seconds to go up or down the power levels, about two and a half, three seconds. Then it flashes to let you know it's hit the top setting or the bottom setting. Remember on the ramping user interface you get 80% on the top which then brings me on to the turbo. If you want to get to the turbo you just give that a double press. Honestly there isn't a massive difference between the turbo and the highest level on the ramping. Onto the moon mode. When it's on just release it very quickly and that takes you into the lowest output. To get to the strobe you first have to go into the turbo and then double click again and then that takes you into the strobe. If you press within a second, it will take you through one of the three flashing modes that you have. There's your lockout mode, so four clicks to lock it out. Then another four clicks to unlock it and you'll see the light flash to let you know it's back in action. To get to the battery voltage test, just three clicks and then it will flash out the voltage of the battery with the main LED light. So what we have is a pretty comprehensive user interface, but it is going to take a while to get used to. Another feature they've crammed in is a momentary mode, so five clicks on the switch and then the light will only come on when you've held it in. So to cancel that, what you have to do is, the only, this is the only way to cancel it, is unscrew the base cap to cut the voltage and then it will take it back to its normal settings. This is a halter that I picked up myself for the light and I will put a link below to that. You don't get one included with it. I just think it's nice to have a holster for a light like this because it's more of a belt carry to me than it would be a pocket carry. It's a pretty decent holster and it also fits some of the convoy lights. You can also squeeze a couple of batteries into the side segments there. So one of the nicer holsters that I bought myself onto the user guide. Now I've made this a little bit longer so that you can pause it yourself and look through because you can program the torch and there are a lot of different settings. You can adjust the moonlight level 
how you can have that a bit lower you can get rid of the green LED you can adjust the number of power levels if you don't want the ramping mode and rather than spend ages on the video explaining all of that I've put it up there for you so you can have a look moving on to the beam shots now with the ramping user interface remember we're going from the lowest output up to 80% as I said earlier there isn't a big difference between the 80% and the 100% it's about 960 lumens you wouldn't notice a huge difference but you can see that really tight intense beam spot I have done some shots later on that show you the difference between the high level and the turbo onto the Nightcore EC30 mixed beam pattern with this completely different cool white more of a flood light although it does have a bit of range obviously not going to have anywhere near as much range as a light like the GT Mini. We'll run a few more beam shots now and I'll come back with some thoughts at the end. Too many areas to pick holes in on the GT Mini. You've got a very nice range on this light. Choice of tints, neutral or cool white. One of the things I think people are going to like with this light is the fact that you can customize the user interface. I get on quite well with the ramping UI, but if you want the normal power steps, you can do that. A couple of points for me would be the programming function could be a bit more intuitive to use. It is going to take a while to get used to that, and do keep the user guide around because you will need to refer to that. It is a very nice little thrower and I do think it will be a very popular model. 
I'm a little bit late with my review on this. I didn't get offered a sample until recently, but I do think it's a nice light overall. Thanks for watching the video. I do appreciate it, and I will see you very soon.